So here's Heavy Cardboard's featured presentation. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. The Venerable Old Soldier. This game is responsible for my board gaming addiction hobby. And uh, Puerto Rico is a 2002 production designed by Andreas Seyfarth. The anniversary edition published in 2011. 2011. Originally 2002. The artist is Franz Fovinkel. Is he the same artist? Nope, oh, different they, artist. It is. But there are three different artists for the uh, anniversary edition. I did edition. not know that. Yep, awesome. Yep. Publisher, Rio Grande Games, and about... Aaliyah a billion and others. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know? right. So it's a two to five player game that takes a couple hours, give or take, with a player count. Availability and cost for Puerto Rico <laughs> is... Uh, for this edition, the standard edition, is about 32 bucks uh, online. I've seen it. Forty four ninety five is... Manufacturer suggested retail price, and the uh, anniversary editions a little bit more. Little um, bit. If Not you much. can find it, um, if you can, two to three hundred online. Mm. Uh, usually, uh, like in the on Board Game Geek on the on the marketplace, there sure. people are reselling it. Not hard, not easy to find anymore. Apparently, uh, I think people saw it online for sixty bucks when it came out. Wow! Yeah. Uh, for plays and player counts, I've only ever played three to five player counts. Same here. Just numerous ones over the years, but I've, I've never played two player. You know, I, the funny thing is, is the, the two player official variant actually came in the anniversary edition. I've yet to play it. I've heard that it actually plays yeah, same. I've heard pretty it's well. Um, now you are the very much the experienced player when it comes to this, as far as the two of us. Sure. I've played it. Anywhere, either five or six times. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I should note, I first played this about a year ago. So I am way late to the party. Better late than ever, I guess. Well, absolutely. And it's it's and it'll come through throughout our review. But um, my enthusiasm for the game is still very high. Awesome. So, yeah. Scalability for the game, I think, is, is quite fine. The sweet spot's four. But three and five... Is fine in my opinion. Uh, absolutely, and they play differently, uh, oh, yes. um, which yeah, we'll yes. get into. But yeah, I think it scales, and like we said, apparently two player as well. Um, but I mean, it's not a two player game if you ask me. Probably, I I'm willing to give it a try and mm. find out. Mm. Okay, I guess I'm not since over the years I have not done so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as usual, we don't really teach how to play a game, especially a game like Puerto Rico that's got. So much media out there on how to play it and no doubt. when to play it and why to play it. So we're going to just touch on a couple of things that uh, make the game... Uh, well, a couple of things that will make our points about the game... Make sense. Make sense. Sure. Have some context. Yeah. So, roles. The game's a role selection game, and that's the gas that fuels the engine of this game. Every turn, beginning with the governor, players are going to select a role for that turn. Everyone will do the action that comes with that role, beginning with the player that selected the role, and that player is going to get a little special bonus, a little extra vigorish on top of that action that the, that the role provides. For example, the builder. If I select the builder, everyone's going to get the build, but I'll get a one-coin discount in my building. Which can be significant. Absolutely. <laughs> Critical, even. <laughs> After... The end of a, of a round, the governorship will rotate, so everyone will get to be the governor numerous times and have the first selection of roles during the game. And the roles are basically a builder, a prospector, a captain, a craftsman, a mayor, a trader, and the settler. Trader, as in trading goods, not... Trader. Right, got not, not tour. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there are uh, plantations in the game. You have your little player mat, each one, and it's half divided into the city of San Juan and half divided into a wilderness area that you're going to cultivate little plantation tiles in. And these are going to produce the crops that you're going to sell either raw or processed in the market or ship them away. There's corn, which is never processed, only traded raw. And there's indigo, coffee, tobacco, and sugar, all of which are processed in specialized buildings in San Juan before they can be sold or traded. And all thematically, historically accurate. Very cool stuff. There's also a quarry that you could put down in your plantation area, which produces stone. And that just functions as a discount mechanism when you're building buildings, you know. 
in order to produce goods, the fields must be worked. They must be staffed. and Which makes sense. Absolutely. Corn does not harvest, harvest itself. itself. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So that you're going to need to position a limited supply of workers. They call them colonists in the game. In your different fields and in your different buildings, but more about that in a second, in accordance with your strategy, whatever you're trying to produce. And it is a limited supply. So at first, you need to be really careful about where you put them. So the buildings... Some of the buildings will process the, the raw crops into sellable, tradable goods, and other buildings will just grant you special capabilities during gameplay. For example, the indigo plant. What do you think that does? Uh, I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> makes indigo, right? <laughs> right. Out, of, out of your indigo plantations. Sure. But the small market gives you an extra doubloon when you sell goods in the marketplace, right? A key feature of the building buildings are their limited supply. Mm -hmm. And so if there's one you want, you better go after it. Because there's never, not everybody in the game is going to get the same building. They're yeah. all purposely right. limited less than the number of players. Right. Exactly. And the buildings cost money, coins. Of course. The quarries are the discounts for those things. So getting a, a recurring income with some of your buildings and things is a pretty important little part of the game. And buildings were also a very important source of victory points at the end of the game. Which is the goal of the game. Yes, victory points. When a player has built 12 buildings, i.e. they have filled up San Juan, that's one of the end game conditions. So there's the colonist. And the colonists are the, that resource that's required to staff both buildings and plantation fields in order to get your engine going. Some of the buildings can even take two or three colonists for a little greater productivity in the buildings. And for a chunk of the game, like I mentioned earlier, the colonists are in short supply. So you're really playing a, oh my God, I need Steal to Steal from Peter, right, right, give right. to Paul type thing, right? But eventually, you're likely to have more than you need as the game goes on. Guys are out fishing, just hanging out on the beach. That's right. Whatever, right. In the slums there of San Juan. <laughs> I like to think that they're, you know, drinking the rum. Right. And when, one of the end game conditions is when the game runs out of colonists. And then there's shipping. And shipping is another thing that you do with the, with the goods that you produce. You don't sell these in the market. You ship them back to Spain for victory points. There's only three ships running in the game. And each one can only carry one kind of good at, at any one time. And so there's this whole thing about monopolizing what's on a particular ship and limiting VPs for other players, you know, that's a, that's a key tactic. Boy, is it. When a ship is full, it sails off, and then it's ready to be taken over with other goods. Right. And um, one of the cool things about limiting the other people's use is when, when you can't ship everything, there's only a limited number of things you can keep on your dock, and then the rest of your goods will, will right. expire. Right, right. right. And that's, um, in a nutshell, what Puerto Rico is all about. There is an expansion for Puerto Rico, Two of them, really. And uh, there's 14 more buildings mm -hmm. uh, and forests, which are like quarries. But but the kind of cool thing about forests is you don't have to put workers in the forest to get your discounts. But instead of one quarry giving you a discount, it takes two forests to give you a discount. Huh. Um, so that's so that's pretty cool. Rock on. And that's, uh, that's what's going on in Puerto Rico. Well, let's talk about the cardboard that you get in these two boxes. So Tony's going to talk about what comes in the standard edition, and I'm going to focus more what's in the anniversary edition. The reason being, I have zero experience with the standard edition. I know, first world problem. I understand yeah, that. Yeah. I'm just saying, we've only ever played this this version whenever you we have played only. together. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so that's all I can speak to. I mean, I've, I've seen pictures. I've you know read up on it online, yeah. but why would I bother when I have... The precious. Absolutely. <laughs> so components of graphic design in the in the normal version, the, the standard version of the game. Sure. They're plain. Okay. They're fine. Okay. <laughs> they're dated. Uh, so is it uh, now now I'm curious. Now for those that for for those that are not familiar with Puerto Rico, um, but maybe uh, familiar with a game like Castles of Burgundy. It, they're both a Leo. Are they similar component quality to something like that? Just kind of no. thin, flimsy. Oh no, no. The the no? quality of the uh, cardboard is is quite fine. Okay, it's All not right. as thick. Okay, as in the anniversary, but right. it's quite fine. It's not 
wafer thin as okay. they are in castles. castles of okay, all right. right. But just artwork wise, bland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No pictures, just words. All right. Well, see now with the anniversary edition. I mean, everything is top notch. The super thick tiles, the really? the th- the ships, the player boards, um, the tiles. Are, they did a really smart thing with this. They have gorgeous artwork on one side with all the buildings. Mm-hmm. You flip them over, and it has all the description of what the building does, so right. you don't have to reference back. Granted, for those people that have played the game a million times, they get to enjoy the artwork side, sure, sure. whereas us, us newer players still use the other. But the option is there, which is fantastic. It comes with metal coins. Yeah. And they're a little small. They're kind of the they're like dimes. Pennies. It's smaller than pennies. Yeah. I'd say more dime size. Uh, but they're beautiful. They, I mean, they clank. I mean, yep. that's, they're metal coins. What else do you want, right? Exactly. Um, they have big, chunky crates for the goods, yeah. which Instead are awesome. Instead of, in this game, they're octagon. Red right. octagons. In that okay. game, they're crates. Yep. Uh, and like I said, the artwork is beautiful mm. through and through on everything from the ships to the player boards yeah. to the buildings. Oh, also, the colonists are just like... They're like Advil in this one. They're just oh, little really? tiny. Yeah, and over there, they're they're the octagons in that. Right, game. they're they're, they're the, what were the goods? Right. They're in like the basic. half inch high, quarter inch yeah. octagons in there, and they're they're like aspirins over here. <laughs> <laughs> they're tiny. So they're, gra- they're like the guys in through through the ages. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Uh, so gr- the graphic design is pretty clear, and the uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I had no qualms. Sure, rulebook wise. I think it's wonderfully clear rule book. Yeah, it, everything's laid out in the, you know, logical order, mm-hmm. but uh the nice thing about especially about Aaliyah rule books is they give that summary in the in the margin. Right. So it, if you're familiar with the game but it's been a little while, instead of reading the whole thing, you can just be go down the margin and be mm-hmm. like, "Oh, yep, 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 got it. Okay." And boom, ready to rock and roll. So uh yeah, just nothing but praise as far as the rule book goes agreed all right let's talk about the weight of puerto rico edward do you think puerto rico is medium is it heavy is it somewhere in betwixt i would say in betwixt but uh probably on the on the medium side of things definitely definitely medium heavy um yeah i yeah yeah, i I I think i think more medium it's not um just to go ahead and jump into complexity, it's not really a complex game. There's not, you know, crazy little secret rules. I mean, the buildings are the only things that add the complexity the, because the of their little breakers, rule. Right, right. right. But it's really not a complex game. Do you feel it's complex? No, it, the rules overhead is really low. Once yeah. you learn it, you look, you have right. it, you have it down. Um, for just to give a little bit of, I guess, background. I first played the game about a year ago, so mm-hmm. I, I'd had a year, uh, about two years in the hobby beforehand. Mm-hmm. And it was super easy for me to pick up and learn. Sure. Um, having you know played games uh, previously, uh, I picked it up pretty quick. Um, one thing that helps as far as complexity wise, not really rules overhead, but uh, depth of, of decision making, is as the roles get chosen by other players, uh, your choices get fewer. Right. So there's less over. You know less. Uh, of an overwhelming decision tree and less AP. Sure. So it's a kind of an easier curve the later you are in turn order, I would say. With uh, planning, what's your opinion on the planning required to play Puerto Rico? I I definitely feel like while you want to have one grand strategy in mind, it's a pretty tactical game Mm -hmm. uh, as far as there are a lot of different uh, orders or different ways. Let me try that again. There's a lot of different <sighs> paths to victory. Yes and no paths, but what I'm trying to go at is the order in which the roles can be selected mm-hmm. can change so oh, much. There's yeah. so many, so well, much variety so as far right and exactly. That's right. that's why. And, and I agree. You know, you definitely there is some planning involved because you want to, you know, figure out a certain path through the game where it's going to be. You know, hey, is it corn or is it this or or what it might be. Uh-huh. Go after those buildings, go after those plantations, uh, et cetera. But it, yeah, with with the role selection and diminishing choices as the turn order changes, um, yeah, highly tactical. Yep. Yet, I, it, it, as strange as that is, you and I tend to favor more strategic games. Sure. Yet we really enjoy this. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting uh, uh, take on that. The fact that 
there can be tactical games that we really enjoy. Absolutely. I guess is what I'm trying to get at. So as far as luck and random factors, okay. There's really one, isn't there? Is there anything else that I'm missing? There's the draw of the plantation tiles. Is there anything else that I'm forgetting? Other than, obviously, initial turn order, right. whatever. But I don't think so. No, I think so, we're good. Yeah, very low luck very in this low. game. Game length, I don't really feel is a, a factor to the weight of the game. You know, it's... No, it... it it's really pretty quick. It, it, it's surprisingly quick mm -hmm. for, for the weight of the game. Mm -hmm. it, it plays fast. Uh, it's appropriate for what it offers, and and it really there's very little downtime sure. usually. Yeah. Uh, so that helps keep it moving and, and make it feel like a quicker game as well. I think that uh, for a person a newbie to get it mm -hmm. takes uh, a couple of rounds, seeing all the different roles and their interaction. That's exactly what I have written down. Right. Yep. And um, because there are a few different, you know paths through the game in terms of oh let's take these buildings and these crops yeah, kind of main uh, paths right. strategy wise right i think uh, multiple plays would reward a person uh, a person's exploration of the game as well oh yeah it, like you have to see the final scoring just you know counting up and and see those those victory point buildings at the right. end um, and then you know you see how badly you got destroyed right. by experienced players right um, and then you learn okay what did they do? Right. Hey, that's something that I can mimic or maybe that I, I try and go hunt on my own. Um, but yeah, as far as getting it, a few, few rounds uh, just to see what the, what the different roles do. I agree. Cool. Well, let's talk about what we enjoy about Puerto Rico. <laughs> well, it's the gold standard for role selection games, right? This is the mother of role selection. This yes. is the one where they all come from, is it not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there a lot of game and it plays, you know, surprisingly quick, you know, or relatively speaking, it plays quick. Sure. Um, very little downtime between turns um, because, okay, you selected the builder. Well, we all get to We build. all get to do something. Right. You know, unless you don't have any money. Or Right. Or, or you choose not to. Choose not to. I always <laughs> choose not to when I don't have any money. Right. But eh, whatever. <laughs> uh, timing means a lot in this game, and and I really like that. And I think that that's where a lot of the player interaction is, where you're trying to say minimize the player interaction by timing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to build when you cannot, right? You know those kinds. Sure. Of well, and, and that kind of jumps into what I have as my next note, which is the game's as much about making you lose as it is making myself yeah. win or you know it's there's but there's no direct take that in this game no. and so it's it's, it's positive negative interaction right it's <laughs> it's really a unique you know animal in that respect i i don't believe even though i have my own little san juan and plantation area over uh -huh. here i don't believe that this is i mean you can't call this multiplayer solitaire because of that i think puerto rico and bigfoot are in the same you know, it's a myth. Oh, I was like, where are you going with Bigfoot? It's a myth. Sasquatch and Sasquatch. Yeti and okay, Yeti. No, no, no. I I, I get that. Um, there's a lot of interaction. I feel like in the role selection, in just the way the roles, mm -hmm. you know, everybody taking the same action, and that whole, I guess, take that indirectly. Um, yeah, I, I think there's plenty of plenty of interaction here. There is a uh, there is a cycle in this game. That I see, and that is, at the beginning, you know, you need to have some fashion of of earning some, creating some recurring revenue, right? Building and, your economic engine. Well, and specifically some money, right? Revenue, right? So that you can get some buildings that are going to help you do all the other things that you need to do, in, including continue to enhance your revenue, and then you're going to focus. You're going to like switch on to. Victory point scoring time, you know, and start doing various things like that. And then you're going to decide when you should end the game. And if you're not the one deciding when you're going to end the game, you're probably not going to like it when it ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you messed up the first two things, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, quick to learn, hard to master. Uh, so if, if you're playing with experienced players, the good news out of that is you're going to get to see what works and what and what you did, yep. why it right. didn't work. 
Um, so there, there's that, uh, there's that feedback loop as far as, oh, this is why I got crushed early on. Kind of with that, that skill is going to win out. Uh, effective focus strategies really are the order of the day. Mm -hmm. It forces you to develop different strategies as you play the game more that also evolve based on player count as well. Right on. I think that Puerto Rico is some awesome gateway material into heavier fare. That's what it was for me. It got me from Carcassonne being cool to like, whoa. There's a whole nother world. There's a whole nother there. world out there. Huh. You know, I always thought of this as more of a medium weight game, but I guess I could put it kind of with Lahav in that respect that that has always been the one that I recommend as a gateway to heavier games. Mm -hmm. But, no, I could see Puerto Rico being in the same vein. Uh, you know, late on the rules, but uh, deep as far as the decision matrix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I dig that. Um, and kind of what I was fumbling over earlier was uh, the huge amount of role sequences. That's the word I was trying to go with. Um, it allows for a really a ton of brain burning decisions because you can try and look around the board and try and figure out what people need or what they don't need and try, especially if you're earlier in the turn order, try and map out and almost force their hand into what actions, what roles you want them to select right. just by your astute, you know, uh, situational awareness of everybody else where they're at in their game. And all of those roles, with the exception of the prospector, they're just so so integrated and blended. That, and I think that's what is part of what makes what you just said possible even. Sure. Um, it's, like, it's like you're setting them up the, the, for them to soft pitch to you maybe. Right, exactly. Right. And, that, and that's what you're trying to do. You're right. trying to either get them to throw you softballs or make it to where, like you said, oh, you don't have enough money to build? We'll go ahead and choose the builder. Right. That type thing. Um yeah. Uh, on that note, speaking of the prospector, or, or not necessarily the prospector, but just in general, how there's there's cash incentive for le less chosen roles, how every after every round, for every role that wasn't chosen, you add a doubloon or a buck on right, there. Right. And at a, at, at a certain point, the temptation is going to be too much to be like, okay, is that the most optimal move? Maybe not, but man, that's a stack of cash, and I'm... I don't really need another indigo <laughs> plantation, but I need that four bucks. Right. You know, yeah. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, another thing, and a huge kudo, I guess, to the game design is outside of the occasional AP, uh, you know, role selection, there is real... Very little downtime in this game. Yeah, if you're not paying attention, then you're gonna you're gonna screw up, make something, uh, make a suboptimal move, tee it up for someone else, for example. So you really need to be paying attention. There there should not be any downtime. You need to be paying attention, like you said, looking around the table. What do I need? What do they need? And making your decisions from there. Which obviously, your first game or two, you might not be doing too much of that. You're gonna be. <laughs> Pretty self-absorbed. Sure, sure. Um, but you should be fully engaged once you're yeah, well, you, competent. You, well, even when you're incompetent, you're fully engaged because well, yeah. you're you're so worried about what you're trying to yeah. do in your own house. I dig that there's tons of variants. So, I mean, let's face it. Puerto Rico's been around, what, 13 years at this point, And some people have played this thing to death. Mm -hmm. I, thankfully, am not one of them. And so the the base game and the, the the nobles and the building expansions, which again I've never played without those. Right. Um. So that's enough game right there before I go exploring. There are just a plethora, Hefe, of variants out sure. there, like a four player to where it's a team game team almost. Game. And well, even with the with the expansion of the new buildings. There's a there's a way to like draft which buildings are actually in this game, which is how we normally play, which makes it difficult when you're when you're learning the game. Right. You're like, I don't know, that sounds cool. We'll go with that one, um, but it it keeps it fresh, and that kind of rolls into 
kind of some things that maybe we don't like, uh, but that some of the board, some of the buildings are pretty bleh, you know. And so I'm looking at you, University. What? Is that <laughs> <laughs> and so being able to draft the initial buildings with the expansion buildings, and again talking about the anniversary edition because that's the only experience I have, and that comes with both those expansions. Mm -hmm. You're drafting those buildings, so those buildings that are there that you don't want in the game, don't draft them. Problem solved, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Unless somebody else is playing, they want one of those in, and so well, well, if they're never going to get your full what you really want. Oh, sure, so. sure, but that's that's part of the draft. It's not it's yeah. not a Tony draft. It's a us draft. Damn. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about things not to like in Puerto Rico. Yeah, so setup can be a bit lengthy, uh, especially when you're drafting what expansion buildings to use. Um, I don't think it's excessive, but it can be a bit, you know, more than your average game. Sure. I agree with that. There's uh, the noobs on the right thing. There's a lot of things that are out there about, oh, this is, you know, maybe something, a defect in Puerto Rico, et cetera, et cetera. I, you know, I don't want to rehash a bunch of those, but, the, sure. but two things spoke to me. One is the noobs on the right. Basically, if you want to win the game, if you're an experienced player and you have a new player in the game, you're supposed to sit directly on their left. Just like in poker, you, it's called the Jesus seat because you, you, you want the bad player to your right. Um, and so, yeah, so right. that's what we call it. So it's the same idea here. I'll be honest, having only five or six plays here, I've been the new guy. I've sure. played with you. I've played with Sweater Mike. Um, and I haven't felt anyone take advantage of it. But I think as long as somebody is competent as far as just a gamer, they understand yeah. the cycles that these get into and yeah. what people are trying to manipulate them into. And they can find their way out of the paper bag. You know, I, I don't think the the hype about it is proportionate to... The it's amount a, of hype. It's real effect in the game. Yep. I mean, there's lots of games where players screw up the game balance. Right. Um, you know, one thing that you can do about it is maybe adjust your seating. Another thing you can do about it is how about explaining the phenomena to the new player? <laughs> Before the game. Especially if they are a competent player so right. that they can be on the lookout and understand. So that it, And it, I understand that a lot of players want to experience the strategy and learn the game on their own, which... And we're not we're, talking we're, about right. giving them strategy. We're sure. saying, look, keep an eye out for this, and people right. are going to try and push you in, the, in it, whatever, and just make them aware of, like you said, the phenomenon that the game is subject to, or at least accused yeah. of, and yeah, and move on from there. Um, so I mentioned a little while ago, some buildings are better than others, but really. Drafting helps eliminate mm -hmm. some of those buildings. So, okay, there's a problem. There's our fix, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so at this point, obviously, with this game being out so much, some people are going to be burnt out on Puerto Rico because they probably played it to death when it first came out, you know, in the early to mid-aughts. And I would say maybe check out some of the variants out okay. there and give it another go, you know? The other thing that spoke to me on the on the list was initial turn order. There apparently it's been statistically proven <laughs> that starting with corn is a slight advantage and it varies with player count. It, is that like white has an advantage in chess? And so um, there was a there was something they do in tournaments. I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Bid victory points in half victory point increments and stuff for turn order. Problem solved there, you I guess. be first? Might cost you two or three victory points at the end of the game. Interesting. And to be honest with you, we... I mean, even some of the games that we truly, truly love, we've played 10, maybe 15 times for the most part. We're not getting that deep statistically and no, analyzing no, games. No. And nobody in our group is like that. No. So we're just not playing with people that are going to hyper-exploit some of these right. you know, uh, perceived issues with the game. Um, Another balancer of turn order I've heard that if, if you think it's an issue for you is, cool, you're, you're first, you're starting with corn, you get one doubloon less. Offsets. Yeah. Okay. So, like you said, though, it's just never been a 
I'm not at that level. I'm happy to admit I'm just not this at that 18 level. This ain't 18XX. Right. Relax. <laughs> Play the game. So with the with the huge amount of roll selection sequences that are out there, uh, those prone to AP can bog down a little, just get lost in... Looking around the table. Okay, what do you... Okay, and then move on to the next player in a, in a five-player game. It can be a bit of an issue. Mm-hmm. So just, you know, a little... Elbow to the ribs will take care of that, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Just go ahead and take the prospector, will you? <laughs> <laughs> they do that, and then they go, I'll take the prospector. <laughs> and you're like, wait, you just what? studied for five minutes for, really, you're going to do that? That's right. Um, so one thing I failed to mention earlier, um, it's kind of harkening back, I guess, is the difference in player count. And so some people have said that uh, five players can be a little too chaotic. Um, and you mentioned earlier that four feels like a sweet spot here. Um, if you feel like it's too chaotic with five, apparently, the, again, I don't have enough experience to say definitively, but three player, seem, you, you tend to have the most control mm-hmm. in the game, cause obviously because you're not having to wait so long until your next turn. So that makes sense. So if you're worried about that, loss of control, play with fewer players. All right. All right. So you wanna you wanna talk about it? Sure. All right. Go for it. You start. Nope. Okay. So I guess we should mention that the game has um, implied slavery in it. Yeah. This just in. Um, Puerto Rico back in colonial times had slaves. Yeah. This isn't news. Slavery is terrible. Slavery is still going on. There is nothing positive whatsoever in any respect in any way about slavery. With that said, however, this is a game. Mm -hmm. Um, You and I are both war gamers as well. Uh, We like historical themes. Um, I have no problem with slaves being in the game, whether it's this, five tribes, whatever. It just doesn't bother me. It's it's we're not we're not. I guess we're not glorifying no no slavery. It's, It's just it's it's what's. What happened? I, I don't want to run the f- from the fact that no, but it existed and that yeah. it does exist. But it's just I just kind of over it in games, though. It's it's this is not a slavery theme game. It's not a death camp theme. It's not a murder theme. It's right. It's a worker in a building in a game. Right. It's a mechanic and um, like it's an abstraction. So just you know, if this was a a white labeled box of mechanics, it would still work equally fine. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. It, if it bothers you, don't play. Don't play. I guess. I. I just. It's a non-issue. What's I just zero issue whatsoever. And the fact that the the colonists are brown. <clears throat> I don't get. I whatever. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's all we got on that. So for me to summarize Puerto Rico, uh, it, it is to me the venerable old soldier of board gaming, responsible for my addiction. And for that, it will always have my respect and a place in my heart and my collection. The game has won 11 international awards. It owned the number one spot on BGG for six years. That's cool. This does not happen when a game sucks or does not resonate with the community. To me, Puerto Rico is a classic design that, in my opinion, is board gaming royalty. It is that elder figurehead of the state that is respected and influential. It doesn't get to play it used to, but when I get to play it, I still immensely enjoy the game. And if you're new to the hobby, you love medium or, or heavy games, or you're looking for a game to transition people into starting to play some heavier games, look at this old game. <laughs> and play it. Just buy it. It's a it's a it's a really good one. You won't be sad. Huh. All right, rock on. See, for me, I come about this from a totally different perspective. It's not it's an old game because it was published a long time ago. Right. But it's not an old game to me. It's a year old to me in that respect. Does it feel like it's a modern game, like a game like Wildcatters or or Kanban or any? No, it it feels older, but it doesn't feel dated. 
Okay. And every single time that we get this game to the table, I'm excited to play it, and I bitch and moan, why do we not play this more often? Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for this podcast, I'd probably play it more than we do. For the simple fact that we're having to churn through games to, for we, the podcast. We play a lot of different games. We yeah. do. Um, and not all newer yeah, games, yeah. just we have to get through the games. It's a game that I thoroughly enjoy. I easily foresee myself playing it another 20, 30, 40 times before it's all said and done. And I'll be honest, I can't wait to play it again. So what's your rating for Puerto Rico? You know, I... That's tough. Um, But you know what? I'm just going to give it a a, a solid five. A solid five. A solid five. Um, Is it a Hall of Fame game? It's a Hall of Fame in a sense that it's 13 years old and it's still a top 10 game on BGG. But it's it's just there's not enough oomph there and there's enough questions, I guess, about long term viability. Uh, uh, about the oh, no, 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 as far as you know, uh, not not so. I'm I'm failing in my description here. I do wonder if some of the gripes about the game long term matter once you get 30 40 plays in on the game but realistically how many games am i going to play 30 40 times um but yeah without without rambling anymore i'd say yeah. solid five for me um for me yeah. given, given what it meant to me mm-hmm. what it still means to me it's awards it's it's perch on the rankings and everything if this is not a six there is no hall of fame <laughs> there is no hall of fame <laughs> if this is not a six well for you, but keep in mind, I don't have that that history with the game, I, though. I think it, its influence on the hobby and its standing in the hobby has, irrespective of my personal biases, has has declared this a Hall of Fame design. I, and I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying, for me, my rating, I yeah. don't have it as... But I'm not looking at it in the pantheon of gaming history. Sure. You know, if I did, then all older, you know, chess, crokinole, all those would have to be sixes too. And I wouldn't necessarily say that. All right. That makes sense? It does. Okay. It does. All right. Cool. Right on, man. Make me have to justify my rating. (laughs) (laughs) That's Puerto Rico, guys.